In shocking news, Mike Vrabel was fired by the Tennessee Titans a day after Black Monday. He is coming off of two losing seasons in a row, but he's also a former AP Coach of the Year and had some really nice playoff runs with substandard quarterbacks. It's unclear why at this point he was fired, but it could be something to do with a power struggle and his desire to always have a lot of personnel control. I think regardless, it was pretty shocking, but you know, there were rumors, but I didn't really put much into them and I didn't even include them in any lists I had for coaching candidates, especially since the team that is most interested in him, at least rumors say, hasn't even fired their coach yet, a Hall of Famer. Regardless, he's gonna be very coveted on the open market. So let's take a look at five options that Rabel has this offseason. The LA Chargers are obviously heavily rumored to be engaged with Harbaugh in talks, but Harbaugh could be pretty mercurial and he isn't without options, one of them being the Chicago Bears, who probably won't fire Iberflus unless Harbaugh says yes. As far as backup plans go for the Chargers, I think Vrabel will be a very good one. Sure, he's had some issues when it comes to meddling with personnel, and it doesn't always turn out well, but he definitely had a point when it came to A.J. Brown. I think either way, his in-game decision-making makes up for his lack of personnel prowess, or at least perceived. I think Herbert would do well with Vrabel, laying a fire under his ass. He also would likely install a play-action-based system that Herbert has talked about getting for years. Not to mention, unlike the predecessor for the Chargers, he would make smart, risky decisions, like the one he did with the two-point conversion against Miami recently. I think all in all, this would be a great spot for Vrabel. I think being with an established quarterback is probably better for him than developing one. I just did a list for the Atlanta Falcons, and Vrabel obviously wasn't on it because he wasn't fired yet, but I definitely would have covered him if that was the case be an interesting fit, especially since they just fired his former offensive coordinator, Arthur Smith. As far as seamless fits go, this one couldn't be any better. What happens a lot when new coaches come is that they have to get rid of talent that don't really work with their system and who are often good, and then it takes a little while, if ever, for them to get good again. That wouldn't really be the case here. And unlike his former offensive coordinator, when he had a great running back like Derrick Henry, he gave him the ball a lot. So I could see that happening with BJ. Also, Arthur Blank, being 81, would definitely like having Vrabel, and he would be probably amenable to paying him quite a bit, considering he doesn't have that much time left and wants a Super Bowl. Of course, the QB situation is a bit unsettled, so it would depend on who they get. The Washington Commanders are probably the hardest team to read when it comes to who they're going to hire next. If you want to go off of Josh Harris and his ownership of the Sixers, then maybe you think he'd want to have a you know trust the process guy. By that, I mean a coach that would be okay with losing to accumulate picks. I can't see Vrabel ever doing that. That said, it's just speculation. We have no idea. I don't, there's no proof that he would act the same way while being the owner of the commanders. I think as far as rosters go, they do have some talent, especially when it comes to the defensive tackles and wide receivers, and they are in a position to get Caleb Williams or Drake May. I do think it's an attractive job, especially since Daniel Snyder's not around. I don't think it's a terrible fit, but... Just something about him being a commander's coach just doesn't seem to work for me. I don't know why, but I wouldn't rule it out. The New England Patriots are the most obvious choice considering his past history with the team. And also that's what the rumor mill has been suggesting for months now. But it's Tuesday afternoon and Bill Belichick still has yet to be fired. Also, it's not as attractive as it was a few weeks ago when they looked like they were locked into number two pick. I like Jaden Daniels, but there's definitely some questions with him, especially when it comes to how thin his frame is. They could go with Marvin Harrison Jr., but then who's throwing to him? Bailey Zappi? He'd have to go for some sort of stopgap. So I really don't think the situation on paper is that great. But I don't think that matters to Brable as much. I think he's emotionally tied to this place. And you can tell by the way he talks about it, he didn't love being let go as early as he was and would love to stick it to Bill Belichick. The Carolina Panthers are definitely the least likely landing spot for him. But... I don't think it's completely unlikely. Sure, working with David Tepper seems about as much fun as you can imagine, but he does have a lot of money, and not that Vrabel needs it. He could persuade him with a lot of cash. Though, funny enough, I think Vrabel could actually make it work there. As far as strong personalities go, Vrabel is the strongest, and he would not be intimidated by a guy like David Tepper just because he has billions of dollars. If anything, I could see Vrabel absolutely alphaing David Tepper. But still, why would a guy with as many options as Vrabel has go there? And like, yeah, sure, it's hard to turn down money, but really, what's the big difference between 25 and 35 million? I think you could live with it if you don't have to be in an annoying situation. Carolina probably will have to overpay for a guy who doesn't even want to be there. Someone like Kellen Moore. So where do you think Vrabel ends up? Let me know. Leave a comment below. Also, definitely like and subscribe and share it around if you can. Thanks.